Hey, today we're going to take a look at the steering on this 3520. It had a lot of wobble in the steering. I think I've got a fix for that. I've also got some information that will be helpful to you whether you have this tractor, this specific problem or not. I learned some things when I was shopping for parts that I'd like to share. I'll share that as we go along. Let's get started. I started to show you the problem on the tractor where the, you could actually see the wheel wobbling. And then I realized that that was kind of obvious uh, just from what I had said, maybe not so much help there, but I could go ahead and show you the problem. The problem uh, is in this tie rod end right here. So there's a tie rod that goes all the way across the tractor and this one. Now it wasn't uh, the boot here wasn't torn up. I tore that boot up when I took it off. A little more on that in a second. But uh, the problem is the amount of play that's here. Right? You can maybe see the back and forth play here. Here's the new one. It doesn't move at all. In fact, I can't even get any angle out of it at all right now. But the boot's perfect. Everything's uh, great on it. Now, I got this from Deer, from GreenPartsStore.com. Of course, I use coupon code TTWT for free shipping, but I felt like it, it was a, a reasonable price there, and so I went with that. Let me talk about the other problem here, and that is the same type of problem, but on this steering cylinder. Now, the steering cylinder here, you can see the steering cylinder, it's all one piece, right? There, the, the tie rod end is not separate, and it, again, has a lot of play in that ball joint. The other end really doesn't have that much play. It, it would be fine. Naturally, I would spill oil out here showing you, but that's the way it is when you work with hydraulics of any kind. So I had to buy a totally new steering cylinder. There was really no place I could find that you know would make these where they're repairable. I looked at the Green Parts Store site to see what the official deer part was. It was $853 for just the cylinder. So what I did was I searched the part number. I first went to partscatalog.deer.com, found the part number, I believe LVA14159. And when I searched that part number, I came across this other site that had these uh, OEM parts. This one was $853. This was $425, exactly half of the price of the original. So. I decided for old 3520, Rudolph, whatever we're calling it, it was good enough. Now one thing I want to do is I want to see the direction those elbows are facing before I take anything off. I'll go ahead and take out this plug. Those elbows should be fine. The threads are O-ring. The O-rings look fine. If they're not, I'll replace them if they turn out to leak, but I'm not going to worry about it right now. And this one was pointed, pointed something like that. Now I put this plug on that elbow. I bought a set of plugs from discounthydraulichose.com. You can get a whole set of them, and I found those plugs to be useful. Of course, they're reusable, but I can put those plugs on, and then I don't have a leak like I showed here. I didn't put a plug on the other end, but I should have put it on both ends. And I didn't even have to get it tight. It's not like I was dealing with pressure. Let's see, I think it was something like this. And that should be tight enough on that. Now I looked at the technical manual about how to do the toe in, right? Because this other piece is gonna have the, the complete tie rod, right? So that's gonna set the toe in. And the technical manual does have some direction on that. The final toe in is supposed to be zero to three millimeters. We'll measure that when we get closer. And it gives me a little clue here that if I've taken this tie rod end off that I need to, um, I'll, I'll just read it to you. If both tie rod ends were removed, screw in the rod in until the distance from the lock nut to the end of the threads is approximately 22 millimeters or 0.875 inches, 22 millimeters. Believe it or not, I have millimeters and inches on this tape and I'm gonna use them. So I'm just gonna leave that jam nut set it right about there. 
now we're ready to get over toward the tractor and see if we can put these on. Before we start putting things back together, I think it'd be good for me to talk a little bit about how I've taken this apart. I should have videoed this, but quite frankly, I was sick and I had zero voice. I couldn't even whisper for a couple of days. It was, yeah, it was, it was really kind of odd. I don't know that I've ever had a, a cold that just affected me that much. But I was able to get out maybe an hour at a time, as I said in an earlier episode, and just do a little bit at a time. Well, this was one of those projects that I worked on a little bit. So the first thing I had to do was to take out the, the, the tie rod. You can see how this tie rod, uh, the end here goes down into a big hole here. Now there's a taper. You can see the taper here on this, right? And that taper, you drive it down in there, or at least you put it down in there and you, and you tighten it up. It's a fine threaded nut here. And that gets really tight. It should not move or give at all. Well, when it comes time to take it out, 10, 12, 15, 20 years later, that's not easy. I could not get it out with any you know, normal means. So I had to get a pickle fork. Yep, that's what it's called. At least that's the slang term for it and it just slides right in here and you just drive it in notice that it's a, a wedge shape here right and you drive it in with a large hammer and it will eventually break that loose i didn't have any trouble once i used the pickle fork now that is where i damaged the rubber boot right so i have not taken this side off because i decided there was there was no give in that it just doesn't seem to have any give at all so I'm going to decide that that one is uh, still in good shape. I did have the nut off of it. I thought I would take the whole tie rod out and work on it, you know, over on the workbench or something. But since I had so much trouble getting them out, and since I broke the rubber boot on the two that I did take out, I decided, you know what, I'm, I'm, if, if it doesn't need to come out, I'm not going to take it out. These pickle forks came from Harbor Freight. Really wasn't very expensive. I tried two different styles. Uh, this is a set of five or six different sizes, and you just use a, a regular hammer to, to drive it in. I also tried one uh, that I bought individually for a little air hammer that I already had. Yeah, I think I've shown it years ago on this, on this channel when I was breaking up some concrete with it. The problem with the air hammer version was, again, it was only one size and it really wasn't wide enough the fork wasn't wide enough to go around my particular tie rod so yeah it it didn't work so i needed these the one here that had five or six different sizes so i could choose the appropriate size so i think i'll do the tie rod that goes all the way across i'll do it first i'm going to try to get this threaded in here oh every time i move it a little bit i lose oh am i going the wrong way what if I have the wrong one? What if I have the wrong direction? That would not be fun, would it? I'll try the old one here. It's rotating this way and it goes right in. I must have the wrong one. Yeah, it was the wrong part. Yeah, I'm over a week later here now and I have the correct part now. I had ordered what was the right hand end, but it turns out, I'm pretty sure now that someone has reversed this tie rod, right? So it must have been out before for some reason, and I believe it must have been reversed because I double checked and the folks at greenpartsstore.com double checked with me what I had was for the right end. But now that I've ordered the one for the left end, look at that, goes right in. Now it makes sense that these are going to be opposite threaded, the two different ends. And that allows you to just turn the center section to adjust the toe in, rather than having to take it all apart. Uh, so that's actually a very nice feature. It's probably the same on almost every vehicle. Okay. 
Meanwhile, I had a chance to talk to one of the prior owners of this tractor. When I say one of the prior owners, it was a one owner tractor, but it was the city of Mendota, Illinois. And I got to talk to him a little bit about how they used it, any issues they'd had. Quite frankly, they said it was a wonderful tractor and they ended up trading it for a 3039R, essentially the same tractor, just because, well, it's getting older and it was a good opportunity for them to trade. From their standpoint, I'm pretty sure the trade-in values were, were good at the time they chose to trade as well. So I don't blame them for doing that. They said they'd had very little issue with the tractor. One thing he mentioned was that the front tires seemed to wear prematurely. Well, now that I see how loose the tie rods were and, and how much they were able to wobble and all, I can imagine why that would have been a problem. Hopefully we've got that issue corrected here with what we're doing today. So I've worked with this a little bit and I've decided to adjust the toe in before I tighten this up. Yeah, uh, the, the fine tuning I, I can do by, by twisting this, loosening both the jam nuts and twisting this, but I thought I should have it close before I go to do that. And before I even put the nut on, I could, I mean, it's, it's real easy to turn this a turn. So I don't know that it really matters. They, they give a, you know, a, a measurement, a way to measure it, but I don't think it really matters. I think as long as you're measuring point to point here. So I'm about 38 and three quarters or 98 and a half centimeters, 985 millimeters. And on the front side, I'm about 978 millimeters. So I'm a little bit too narrow in the front. That means I need to shorten it a little bit in the back. We'll see, one round may be too much. And if it is, we'll, we'll do the detail work after we get it tightened here. 981, 980 or so. So I am between the zero to three millimeters, at least right now. Again, we'll, we'll measure this again after we get it all tightened up. Now, this seemed to be quite long here, and I had a couple of lock washers. I'm, I'm not sure if they're aftermarket or if they were original, but I'm gonna use one of them here. I don't, don't think I'm gonna use one on the other side. Um, it, it's not quite as long, um, but I'm gonna put that lock washer here. And the reason is because otherwise this castle nut was well up above the hole. Oh, gee. Yep, so the pin's turning here and I'm not sure how to handle it. If I was doing this live, you could give me advice right here. But I promise you that would be boring and would not be worth it. So we'll just see what I come up with. That's how you do it. Now where's the keys? Boy, those are wonderful. I think maybe I could go, I could afford a new key for that, maybe. Hate to be too much of a big spender. Yeah, now you're right, the lock washer is not relevant at all because the castle nut does the locking, but it's just in there as a spacer from my standpoint. And I am i can't remember exactly. I didn't have the camera up when I took it apart, so I can't remember exactly whether that was on the this one or on the steering cylinder. So again, I took this side off, took the nut and washer off, thinking I would just take the whole tie rod out. But when it didn't come apart easily, I decided I didn't need it apart after all. So I'm just going to put it back on now. Just have to find that hole. Yeah, there it is. This one's froze up in there, so there's no problem tightening that castle nut pretty well. There we go. That should be good on that. I'll measure the toe one more time. 980, it's about even. I guess that's good enough for now. Let's get to the steering cylinder. This one didn't even have a flat washer. For this one over here, I'll have to pull it out. Yep, 
again the redundant lock washer. May not need it over here, we'll see. Okay, I'm splurging for new cotter pens for this one. Rudolph's worth it. I'm putting them in from the front, thinking that that's going to be a little more reliable. You know, brush and weeds will hit it, hit the front side of this more likely than the rear. So that's the purpose of that. Okay, now we're ready for the hoses. Probably be a little bit of leakage here. I just put these together to try to minimize that leakage. Eleven sixteenths wrench for these. Seems to be a, a wrench that's used often on a lot of these uh, quarter inch hydraulic lines and rarely used anywhere else. Okay, I think we're about done with this. The only part that I'm a little nervous about and that the mechanics in the audience will probably jump all over me about is how tight I've tightened uh, this one here particularly. Uh, the ball joint started turning so I tapped down on this to try to to try to you know make it make contact and hold it but I'm sure I don't have it real tight. Is that going to be an issue? Did, is there some te technique or trick that I need to use to uh, you know, to get this tighter, to be able to keep it from turning. Yeah, if you know something, leave in the comments. And if I'm at risk of it uh, coming loose again because of that, yeah, let me know. Okay, so I guess that about does it. I'll check the toe in again after I like drive it around in the yard for a few minutes. I'll also check to see if the tie rod, that angle piece that, that fits together, if it gets loose. There's probably a name for that as well, but uh, I don't know. it. One trick I had to learn, and that was the pickle forks to be able to, to break that tie rod loose. Uh, and then one hiccup, I guess, that I ran into, and that was getting the wrong part. I'm convinced now that that tie rod had been turned around the other way at some point in its lifetime. Not a big deal. Working with greenpartstore.com, they'll take the returns easily. It's not going to be any problem there. So really enjoy that. Hey, make sure to use code TTWT when you order your parts at greenpartstore.com. And if you have questions there, don't hesitate to ask them. You can, you can even go ahead and place an order. And what I did was put in the notes section of the order, uh, I put the serial number of my tractor and I said, I think this is the right part. Help me out. They contacted me via email uh, before they shipped the order and even sent me some photos of the two different parts that I might need. It, it, it was easy to work with them. So Highly recommend that. Greenpartstore.com slash TTWT on the greenpartstore.com if you want to see some of the kits like the fender and console kit that we've just done, full three-point hitch kit for 1025R, many other items that we've featured on this channel. So check out that specific page for us. But you can always use code TTWT on any purchase. Okay, enough on that. I hope you guys have enjoyed this. I hope it inspires a bit of confidence for you to tackle some of your own uh, repairs that need to be done. It's actually quite rewarding to do it yourself. And sometimes you need a new tool, but hey, that's part of the fun as well. So the pickle forks didn't cost, I think they were less than $50, so not a big deal. Who knows, I may never use them again, but got them now. Thanks for watching everybody. We'll see you next time on Tractor Time with Tim. Whoever sows injustice reaps calamity, and the rod they wield in fury will be broken.